Hey, what's going on, Internet Sweaties? You already know who it is. It's your favorite Internet Sweaty himself, your boy, Mikey Savage 21 And today, I'm actually hoping to bring back an old video series that I used to do called Top 5 Reasons. But I think we're just going to now call it Top 5 or Top 5 List. And so today, we're going to be looking at the Top 5 Reasons Original Films Don't Do Well. And so we're going to start at number 5. We're going to go make our way to the ultimate number 1 reason. So let's jump straight into it. Now I should also go ahead and mention in this video that I'm basically gonna reference both original films and I'm also gonna talk about big budget films to kind of make my points across. Like at one point I'm gonna mention John Carter and while John Carter is not an original thought, it still goes along with the example that I have for that particular number. So I just kind of wanted to let you know about all of that before we got into the video. Again, we're talking about original films where it's like an original idea that was thought up and it's not based on any source material whatsoever that has already came before it. So that means if it was a comic book or a novel, that's why certain films aren't ending up in the list or I'm not mentioning them because they're not original films. All right. So for our number five, we have the movie just plain out sucks. Certain films that have original ideas, kind of like the Bye Bye Man or Monster Trucks, where it has an original idea and it's not based on any type of source material from what we're aware of, and it comes out and people go see it, but the movie ultimately sucks. It's no good. A lot of times when original films don't do well, it's because the movie is just plain out bad. All right, so number four, lack of studio confidence. Now, you guys might be asking, what do I mean by lack of studio confidence? This is basically where... You have a film that's always being pushed here, pushed there. It's like the studio has no confidence in it and there's no press screenings. A lot of times that means the studio does not have the confidence in it and it ultimately ends up hurting the original film, sort of like The House. Now, granted, The House was not the best comedy in the world, but if you would have done press screenings that, you know, shows the general public, OK, you know what? They're doing press screenings for this. They must have some confidence for it. Or where you have certain films like Rings, where again, that's not necessarily an original idea and it's based on a property, but look how it kept getting pushed from this date to this date to this date. It shows that the studio does not know what to do with the film or how to market it, or they just have a lack of confidence in that film. And that really does hurt certain original films. I'm not saying sink a whole lot of money into a marketing campaign, but show us off the bat that, hey, at least you have confidence in it. One thing that I can say about the Wish Upon movie, which is basically an original idea and original concept, and the movie sucked, but at least the studio had confidence enough to keep flagging us with a TV spot here or another TV spot there or another internet ad here, and then you had all these trailers keep playing in theaters and everything. All of that went into the marketing campaign, and again, the movie sucked, but hey, at least they showed that they had confidence in the movie. All right, our number three reason here is big budget films. Well-established franchises take up the majority of the box office a lot of times, and rightfully so, there's nothing wrong with that. But we owe it to ourselves as the general movie-going audience or just as movie fans to go try to check out every film that we can. Obviously, going to the movies is very expensive, especially when you're talking about having a family and taking your family to the movies. It can be very expensive, but we kind of owe it to ourselves to go and check out some of these original films because there's a lot of original films out there that are fantastic but we never really get to check them out or they don't do so well and we keep asking ourselves why don't we get more original films it's not that we don't get you know original films it's just we ultimately go see big budget films so uh, let me ask you guys something when the movie came out last year and i, I thought the movie was fantastic we have films like the nice guys you have a shane black directed film thought it was really awesome but did pour in the box office but i believe at the time it was going up against something that was a big budget film i believe it might at the time it might have been going up against the jungle book now obviously everybody knows about the jungle book this is a disney film ultimately so they already have the big studio presence plus this is a well-known property that a lot of us if not all of us are familiar with so we would rather put our money and our dollar in the movie that we know for sure that we're going to like. Because a lot of times these big budget films, they do deliver. We do have a couple of stinkers. And so far this year, we've had a lot of stinkers when it comes to big budget films. But ultimately, we know that we can put our money into the big budget films and we're going to at least get something out of it. Original content, we don't know exactly what we're going to get out of the movie. One current example that we have is The Big Sick. I think The Big Six is a fantastic movie, but it has two blockbusters going against it right now. It has War for the Planet of the Apes 
plus Spider-Man Homecoming, both a part of well-established franchises that people are aware of. So people would rather go see those two films and go check out The Big Sick. And I know that's for sure because I went and saw The Big Sick on Tuesday. There was nobody in there except for me and my friend. And I felt so bad because it's like the movie was so good, but a lot of people aren't willing to take this risk to go see the film. All right, so getting to the bare bone of our list here, we have number two, which is bad marketing. A lot of times when original films come out, they market the movie very badly. One thing that I would say about the John Carter movie, they did not know how to market that movie at all. There are certain other films where they come out and people just don't know how to market it. As studio, they owe it to themselves to try to find a way to market it to the people to get them in the theater. Whether you have to use misleading information or whatever, it kind of does not matter. As long as you are ultimately intriguing the audience, then you have nothing to worry about. But sometimes studios do not know how to market a film and that ultimately can hurt the movie at the end of the day. All right, so our number one reason for our why most original films don't do well is no support from audiences. And I basically touched on this in the number three where I said big budget films usually take up our, our time because we trust those films. As a movie going fan, sometimes we aren't willing to take a risk with our money. And sometimes that could bite us in the butt and sometimes it cannot bite us in the butt. And my thoughts on that, just kind of wrapping this whole top five video up is, if you want to see more original content, you have to go support it. Again, as a movie going fan, we have the responsibility to make sure that certain original films stand out. We have to show the studios that we are willing to take a risk on original idea. Same thing studios with your bad marketing. You have to be able to make sure you're able to market it to an audience and that you're able to get the point across of what the film is about. Now again, I'm not condoning misleading trailers, but if you have to mislead and put in some awesome stuff to get us to go out and see an original film, again, kind of sort of like with It Comes at Night. It Comes at Night is an original film, but the trailer was very misleading and a lot of people didn't like that, but I ultimately and a few other uh, people ultimately liked it. Okay, same thing, big budget films, less big budget films. We know we wanna see these properties continue and we know we want to see a lot of these franchises kind of flourish or get back to prominence. But sometimes studios, and I'm not saying that big budget films are ever going to go away. They're always going to be here. But again, maybe try to release the movie when it's not having to go up against a big budget film. But all right, guys, that's the top five reasons why original films don't do well. Thank you so much for checking out this first installment of Top 5 Revitalized. You know what? That's what I might call it. Top 5 Revitalized. I don't know. I'll, it's a working title. Thank you for checking it out, though. And again, if you have your own top five reasons why you think original films don't do well and that you think I should have put it on the list, let me know down in the comment section below. As always, please make sure you subscribe to the channel if you enjoy content like this and make sure you tap the little bell so you can be notified every time a video drops. Also, make sure you also tune in to the various movie reviews that I have going up throughout the week. Um, again, by now, if I haven't already, we should be getting a review for The Big Sick, Dunkirk, Valerian, and Girls Trip. They should all be up on the channel by now if they're not they're coming at some point and i promise since i mentioned the house i am going to post a review at some point about the house as well if you guys want me to thank you as always and remember as i always say to become a savage stay a savage and peace out y'all